Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats, and today we're talking with Young Leo. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Tom? Pretty good. It's uh, it's a nice day to get to have a chat with with someone new and learn a little bit more about you. Sorry about that. No worries. So we're here today to talk about you, about your music, and about what you what you do in the world. But for those who are new, could you give a little introduction about yourself? Uh, absolutely. I'm Young Leo. I'm a singer songwriter from Montreal. Um, I make music because I am not good at talking. <laughs> I would rather write and sing. I mean, I that's the the sounds like every musician creative kind of thing. You'd rather create something instead of yes. conversing. So my first question for you is, how did you get into music in general? How was your your early life in music? Um, I started music when I was four. Um, I studied classical music. Um, so basically, my parents made the decision for me. Okay. Um, and then over the years, I feel like I um, carved my own path um, to kind of find my my own identity but that's how it started with a a more formal training and then went into pop today who were, who were some of your influences in the pop world that kind of sparked your interest in that side of things um i feel like it wasn't in the pop world at first um i feel like i listened to a lot of folk music growing up um and then it just felt to me like, and like, because I like the way that those songwriters uh, wrote and it really talked to me. But then when it came to uh, deciding how I would produce, who I was going to work with on my songs, it became clear that, you know, I, I, I like to play. Um, I'm like, a big child and like they have this like childlike energy that like all my friends know mm -hmm. and so for me to like sing and write folk folk music like that's too serious for me so I need something that will like uplift people that's what I want to do and that's what I'm good at I think so pop really is a better channel for me yeah a bit of a different energy to it yeah no that makes so, sense but if I I want to be fair to you, so I'll give you a couple names. Um, I feel like the songwriters that were my biggest inspirations at first were like Cat Power, Emily Ames, Martha Wainwright. Um, look at all those Canadian names. <laughs> those are some some nice names to be looking up to for sure. Yeah, but for the writing for sure. Yeah. So what do you think makes your music unique over someone else's? Um, I think it's what I just spoke about. I think it's my, um, the way that I can connect with people, um, on a, you know, in my personal life as well. Like I have this ease at like making, like not making connections. That sounds, that's not what I mean. More like getting someone comfortable enough to like talk about themselves mm -hmm. or like and I like to hear people so even though you know like oh you're a pop star so you're like front stage I feel like there's a lot of listening to people in my music and having been an observer of things for so many years okay yeah that's I like that that's a nice nice way to think about it for sure now you have a new single coming out, Too Good. I believe it's on June 7th is being released. Yeah. What's the story behind that one? Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's the song is about moving on from a toxic relationship. Um, I don't really like those words like toxic or like healing. I feel like they're like overused, mm -hmm. but basically like a relationship where um you're not you're you're not appreciated you're 
uh, treated badly and you kind of lose your self-esteem. Okay. And so this song is about, you know, try, like not trying to move on because it's actually in the first line, it says, you should have seen me in January. So it's the aftermath of like the rebirth, you know? So it's, it's, it's that phase after of and here again you know like my intention behind that song was not to be dwelling on that relationship it was more to like have this make this song for people who are maybe in the previous phase you know they're trying to get out but when you lack self-esteem it's hard to make any decision in your advantage mm -hmm. so I feel like this song like many songs I feel like we when we listen to music in a on a purely like emotional way the words can talk to us and lead us to make decisions for itself or give us this energy that we need that doesn't necessarily come easily in our when the circumstances are bad around us yeah like helping you grow and helping you expand a little bit more yeah hmm. is your what's your process like when you're putting together your, your music um mm. It has evolved. Okay. So I always find it funny when this question comes up because I'm like, obviously, if it has changed, it's going to change again. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but it's also very different for every song. Um, I, on these new songs, so I had like a debut uh, EP that I released in 2022. That was entirely, you know, me writing and then going and co-producing it with somebody. Okay. But on Habit, the one that came out in December and on Too Good and on the following ones, I'm co-writing with this amazing team that I have. And so the it has changed the whole process where I can really get outside of my head and really focus on what I want to say instead of how I feel or how to be, you know, almost like obsessing over the truth. Yeah. Um, so it's making it more, um, more accessible. So I mainly like, I can write one, we can have a session where I'm like, okay, like I'll, I'll call up my co-songwriter and I'll be like, Hey, I really want to write about this. And then we set up a session and it could be with like a producer. And then we write there during the session and we're done the song after a session. Well, like we're done a demo mm -hmm. or we can just write it down and then have a session where we produce it. Um, there's also times where sometimes like, the producer, the main producer on this, um, on these tracks is Luca, the producer. So there's a track where he actually came up with something that he thought would fit my style and we wrote something for it. So I think it's also, you know, very healthy to go about it that way, but there's no like rigid process. So it allows me to also experiment and approach my emotions differently. And so. Mm -hmm. There's no one process. It's really all. It's it's a team effort. That's for sure. Um, I love how everybody's involved in the project and really putting their heart in it. Um, but yeah. Do you think that's also helped your confidence as a writer grow? Having all these this this team around you now. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I think there was like a lot of a lot of insecurity, a lot of ego. I think they go together. Yeah. Um, before I started writing with people. Um, but I feel like I've come to a, a place where working with people that I can trust and that hear me out when I need to be heard, but that I also, you know, trust enough to be like, okay, you're saying the opposite. I'll... Mm -hmm. sit with it 
and I might change my mind. I feel like this has allowed me to, you know, show the people that I work with who I really am and like show myself, you know, that I can be all the parts of myself. I don't have to be right all the time. Uh, sometimes I have very good ideas. I like, I'm essential to this project, obviously, but mm. it's also, yeah, I think it, it's helped my confidence both as, um, both as a, an artist, but also as a person even. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a building prospect and everyone grows as they're doing things. Yeah. So because the music industry is is a little bit crazy all the time, what do you do to stay grounded outside of that? Um, I run. Okay. I run a ton. Um, I play tennis. Okay. Um, I watch movies. I watch a lot of movies. I feel like a lot of... I was having a conversation recently with with an artist friend and I find that a lot of music people we know more about film than about music because mm -hmm. um, it's kind of too close almost to us to sometimes be able to enjoy it um, and also you know like staying close to the people that I can trust mm -hmm. um not being afraid of like telling people how I feel, having, you know, slowing down sometimes. Yeah. Um, that's an important one. Um, so that's how I stay grounded, how I try to stay grounded. It's always an experience to, to be grounded because there's so many things going on. So trying to keep yourself at a nice level is hard. I know for me, I, I find it very hard to get myself grounded sometimes. Yeah, you got to know yourself well, and it's not the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, it's like what gets you out of your head? What like what keeps you from overthinking? And like it's it's a mix of things, you know, most of the time. And we don't learn that. You know, as like children, they're not like, oh, maybe they do nowadays. I feel like this, we're in an era of like a lot of like psychology. Yeah. But I feel like as a child, you know, like this is something I learned like last year. <laughs> yeah, my, my niece, she's 16 and sometimes she has her moments of really overthinking and then yeah. help her come down. But for me, the only way I really can stop thinking about like something like this is my daughter. Yeah. She's a year and a half and I pretty much, I can't focus on this when I'm, when I'm focused on her. So. Yeah. That's great. That's you know, cause then you're in the moment yeah. and that's what a child needs from you. Yeah. And, and she, cause like I work from home most of the time. So when she's home, she comes and bangs on my door whenever she's awake, just to, she's like, dad, dad. And just try to come in here and see what's going on and gives me that moment of distraction for sure yeah no we definitely need that we can't take ourselves too seriously all the time and we can't forget about the human side of things because in the end it's like it's it's also just a job you know and we have to put people first mm -hmm. yeah it's a it's a nice balancing act but i think i think as you grow in in whatever you're doing you learn where you need to balance for sure yeah it's a it's a fine line between you know being a crazy artist and being a balanced human being mm. i feel like you yeah it, i need to balance more sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so i'm curious with putting together music what's your favorite part of the process you have the writing, you have the production and you have like the live performance. What's, what's the one thing that excites you the most? That excites me the most. I mean, they're all mm -hmm. exciting parts of it, but when you're yeah. uh, as the creative that you are, do you, are you really excited about when you, when you're starting just to write an idea or are you excited with that final product that you get 
people to listen to in a live show? Yeah. I mean, honestly, the show is the most, you know, a adrenaline and the whole process so I would say I would be lying if I'd be like yeah I get as excited in the studio as I get on stage but um but there's this like I think a lot a lot of what we do a lot like a lot of what life is about is about like imagining like making plans for the future like thinking about what's going to happen and so I find that the studio stage is also super exciting that way like I'll be I'll be daydreaming about oh how, where where's where's this song gonna sit in the you know in the set list what yeah. are we gonna do with it live or like so I would say most exciting shows but very inspiring to be in studio and to be you know working having like two three people in the room it's yeah. like you Kinda can't you can't be cool. you can't be bored. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I believe I I read that you're going to be playing at Canadian Music Week coming up, right? Yeah. Oh, how, how exciting is that going to be? Um, I'm pretty excited. It's my first time at CMW. Mm. Um, I'm going to be surrounded with a bunch of emerging artists. Uh, some of my good friends. So it's going to be like, I feel like I'm going to summer camp um, a That's little a bit. Put it. Yeah, actually, I like that. Because there's also, you know, all these all these presentations or uh, conferences. So I'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to be in Toronto because I'm, I'm based out of Montreal. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be like a little, little, uh, little field trip yeah Toronto. yeah that's gonna be pretty fun i believe i have some of my team is gonna be there potentially oh. some of it so I, i'm excited to see how the whole week like i'm based in ottawa so i might not be able to get there myself but i'm excited to see all the all the news and the media and stuff that comes out of it i can pick you up on the way <laughs> yeah well I'm, <laughs> i have to have to check with the wife and make sure you need me yeah make sure they <laughs> bring your kids <laughs> you probably have a blast she loves music so getting to experience yeah. uh, that live thing i think would be really interesting for that's her that's so cool i have a lot of respect for people who like i don't have children myself but like people who involve their children and like whatever they're doing and like i feel like it's like unique experiences that you get through that so we were out taking family pictures uh on the weekend and uh, she was having a little bit of a of a fit, so I I sat her down in front of the camera and showed her how to press some buttons and things like that. And then yeah, now every time she sees the camera, she's like cheese, cheese, and she's getting all excited oh. about it. And it's that's fun. good. Yeah, you you might have uh, you might have caused her to become a photographer mm -hmm. or well, a model. Who knows? Yeah, that's well. So before I started doing interviews, is I I cover live events, so I do photography and videos. And oh. these interviews started during COVID because there was no events going on, so it was okay transition. But now I do I do both, and we do hundreds of these a year now. So it's it's interesting to get to experience the different things. Yeah, and as she grows, she's gonna be able to experience even more, like mm -hmm. and show show you her little personality oh and she's got a, a pretty crazy one right now already so yeah we get more well imagine <laughs> so in all my interviews i i at the the back half of it i always ask some fun questions to make you think a little bit more and see what makes you tick i think this one's the most interesting it's my favorite go ahead what's one thing you think should be asked more in an interview that's not asked enough I think what do you want to talk about? Like, what are you, I think it's a weird question mm -hmm. could be asked like before the interview, but I just feel like, you know, I walk, I walk in a room or like I turn on zoom 
And it's like, whatever is going on in my mind, you know, I want to have a conversation that makes sense with wherever I am right now in the process of, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, those that's, but, I like that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually gonna put a star beside that one so I can add that to my list later. I use that question for times when I'm having trouble putting up new questions. Sometimes I yeah. interview the same person many times and it's okay, well now I have to think of something brand new. So every time I ask this question, I get more to add to my list. Yeah. Well, it's it's also good, you know, to challenge me with the questions, mm -hmm. you know. It brings my, you know, it brings up different stuff. I also really like the like rapid fire questions. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those I are can... fun for sure. Those are fun because they get you out of your head. It's yeah. like, I can't go back. Like I said what I said. <laughs> well, I'm going to have a couple for you probably in here. It'll be interesting. <laughs> Next one on my list though is, what is something on your go-to playlist that people wouldn't expect that you're listening to? Like a guilty pleasure song that you don't really tell people about. Guilty pleasure. I was going somewhere with the first half of your song, but then I'm like guilty pleasure. Um, go either direction really. Cause the, I have a couple songs. People have no idea that I would, that I like, but I don't really think it's a guilty pleasure because they're very good songs. Oh, so why do you feel guilty about them? Well, I, it's not it's guilty pleasure is just the the acronym of if so if it's something that you don't necessarily you can play it around the house when you're dancing around and cleaning. Yeah, it's not like you're having it in the car with your friends sometimes. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I think I'm gonna give you two answers. Okay. I think my main guilty pleasure. And that's a recurring one is I listen to songs over and over and over again. I basically listen until like I'm mentally nauseous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've and, done it a few times. Yeah. But it's like, that's my way of listening to music. Mm -hmm. So like recently I like stumbled upon this song. That's like, what is it called? Uh, Notice you. Okay. Is this great? Like, summer like bought it wasn't even released now like I just like and then it's like these songs will fade because then I'll get tired of hearing them but I'm really like if you don't want to be in my car or I don't want you in my car actually because I want to be able to like listen on repeat for an hour whatever like the drive I have to make mm. sometimes I'll be like fuck like I don't want to give somebody a lift because I know that if I were alone, I'd listen on repeat. Mm -hmm. But then I have to pretend like I'm a normal person <laughs> and that I have like playlists. Yeah. Where really, I just want to listen to this song like maybe 20 times. I, I do uh, that exact same thing sometimes. <laughs> I think we should just be like, full disclosure, I'm pretty sure like a lot of people do that. I would think so, because if you get that one song that's just stuck in your head, you have to listen to it. Like your, your, your body tells you, you have to, it's hard to get around that. It's like, it's the vibe. Like when it resonates with your core, it's like, that's how I feel. Like I feel, you know, like so infatuated right now. And then you listen to the song that just like really resonates. And then like another day, but honestly, the person sitting in your car isn't going through the same stuff. So I totally understand that. I'm like, you can't do it in public yeah imagine if radio people did that <laughs> just over and over again that's <laughs> that's part of the reason i don't i don't even turn on the radio anymore because i found that i was always hearing the same rotation of songs all the time and yeah because when it's the same one but then you don't feel like it it's like mm -hmm. yeah you're going through a breakup and then they play this song that's like a summer like i love you so much song yeah, and you just can't deal with that, but then it's on the yeah. every every forty five minutes, and you're like, oh my yeah. god, so much. <laughs> yeah, I I I don't even turn the radio on. I have a couple different playlists, and 
sometimes I'll, I add new things to it, but then I'll go to the bottom of the list and just replay those last five songs that I added and not listen to yeah. at all. So you pretend. I like how there's like, um, there's a front. Yeah, the, <laughs> it looks like a great playlist, but I'm only listening to five songs out of it, so. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody I, I listen to radio though, because um, for me, it's a way to like discover new music, especially because like, I'm, I make, you know, pop music. So this is my, yeah. this is my field. Um, but yeah, I, I totally understand that it's not for everybody. Yeah. It's, it's good research to listen to radio, especially for, with what you're doing. Yeah. I just tell my wife to send me TikToks and then I'll find new music from that. That's, that's what I'm doing. Oh. Or I get emails for interviews and press releases and things like that. So yeah, There's something coming my way. So you have this whole like system. I like it. Mm. But on your wife's a Yeah. On average, I get about 200 emails a day for, yeah. for releases for whatever. So when something actually piques my interest, I can go take a look. But okay. Then my wife is, is sitting, scrolling through TikTok and she'll send me some goofy videos. And then I'm like, oh, there's a song I like. And then I'll find that. <laughs> I just kind of go. Do for you it. have, do you have, um, so you heard too good? Yeah. I got to listen to it beforehand. Did you add it to your playlist or are you, is it like a Spotify playlist that the song needs to be out? Yeah. So I, that's what I have. It's a Spotify playlist right now. So I have to wait, okay. least, but it's, that, okay. it's my inbox basically waiting for me. You should also make your kid listen to it okay. because I find that this is crazy, but like I always, a lot of people come to me at like shows or like little like showcases And they're like, I discovered your music through my daughter. And I'm like, how old is your daughter? And they're like, she's eight. <laughs> and I'm like, I love that. <laughs> It's like, the, the kids are just like so good with phones these days. And they would be like, yeah, like they love Cold, which like from my EP, my previous EP. And I'm like, shit, that's crazy. Because yeah. like, That's a song, like, it's, I don't know if you heard it, but it's, like, it's such, like, a dark song. Um, and, like, my friends say it's, like, a song to get high to, which, like, yeah. I don't disagree with. Um, but I love, you know, how, like, the same song can mean different things to different people. And, like, those kids, it's, like, I think it's a good song. I think, yeah, it's I think you have taste. Yeah, people are, are taking those now. It's and yeah. music is just being absorbed by so many people my i have that my niece i try to share she's into like goth metal right now for some reason so i'm sharing things from like it's like swedish bands and all those other things that she would have never heard before that i used to listen to a bit when i was younger so i said oh yeah. try this and try this and then all of a sudden she puts on elvis and i'm like you like elvis And she's like, yeah, he is the, I, this is a great love song. I'm like, he's the king. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where, where did you even hear Elvis? Like, it's not even in anywhere that she, she goes musically, but she started liking some of that stuff. So then I introduced her to like Motown and all these, yeah. she, her mind's blown with how music is out there. I think that there's some good things, you know, happening. We, we say like with social media, of course, like it has had, a huge effect on like people's mental health that we can't like uh, ignore. But I think that for this kind of stuff, for like there's trends that make you see stuff that you would never have seen otherwise that give you access yeah. to like music from other countries or like, I don't know, like. It opens the door to a whole new world in a sense of, In the past, you'd have to, for your music to get somewhere, you have to tour, you have to sell an album, and then maybe someone else might hear that. Yeah. You, know, you can literally spread your music across the world with a couple clicks of a button and have yeah. fans from everywhere, but they're all taking your music in at different times in their lives, and it turns into such a unique experience, but it's a shared experience from a whole group. Mm -hmm. That's I just wish, you know, there were more uh more regulations around the platforms um just to make sure you know that we don't all develop anxiety and depression yeah but like 
culturally, I think there's like, and there's some aspects of it that are interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I got yeah. really deep here. <laughs> that's a whole, that's a huge conversation on its own too, because social media yeah. and, and the stuff around it is, is so crazy right now. So, yeah. Well, I can't talk about it and just talk about the good things. I feel like it's, you know, it's been we, bad. you have to have the both sides of it for sure. Yeah. I don't mean to be a downer. <laughs> no, I don't think it's a Next downer. Question. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's definitely something we can have a whole a whole nother conversation on just the ins and outs of experiences on social media. Yeah, I guess like if at least honestly, if we didn't have our phones around all the time, like if you know, remember like like a couple years back, we had like MSN Messenger, so we'd get home and like, but there were like limitations that weren't on purpose like you couldn't use the the phone at the same time that you were using the internet but yeah. like it 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 created boundaries that kind of you know limited the impact of those yeah. things but if we had been able to go on like msn throughout the day then we're not like are we socializing outside of that yeah. So I think for me, it's more like carrying it around on like a cell phone is 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 bad. But should it not exist? I don't think so. I think it it it's got a lot of good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's about yeah, like you said, the limitations and the boundaries that are there. Like there is no boundaries anymore. Yeah, like you can do anything and and everything on a cell phone. Like I can. I can control the lights in my house from my phone and, you know, play music in each my rooms of the house, different song in each room because of how I have things set up if I really want to. Yeah. Which is kind so of then you crazy. become very dependent and it's like, oh, well, I can't get rid of my phone because it's, it's so ingrained in my life. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I, I got this friend who goes to like silent retreats and I want to okay. do one um i just haven't had the time but she's like they take your phone away and you would think that like she's a normal person like she's not <laughs> like she goes to these flatland retreats but she's like a very social person like she uses social media um but like she told me she's like i thought it would be like the hardest thing you know it's 10 days where you don't talk but like after like two hours, your stress level goes down yeah. and you're like, you don't even want it back. <laughs> yeah. Once you realize how nice it is, it's like, oh man, why, why do I have that thing? Yeah. And it sucks like for, for me. So I have, I have hidden beats, which uh, there's, I have 30 people that work for me and then I have to manage them. So I kind of need my phone at a lot of the time. And then, all the other little things about it. It's if I don't have it, then business goes away. So it's, it's hard to balance that, but I make sure I have my time certain time at night, my phone gets sat down or I'm playing a game or I'm doing something different. Like I'm not, yeah, not working. You got to make those intentional decisions because otherwise it's just going to, you know, be there all the time, take over part of your attention. Yeah. And it happens a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, we I'm have sorry I went there. No, oh, hey, that's um, fine. We have a couple more questions because uh, we I Zoom's going to kick us off, booked only a certain amount of time. So we'll go through these pretty quick. Most important question is, what do you hope people take away from your music? I hope it makes them feel good. Mm -hmm. Pretty much pretty simple that way. It just feels good. Yeah. 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 And finally, what motivates you to keep making music? Uh, many things. I think there's stuff I want to talk about. Um, the people I work with. Um, the people who listen. And who's like who come to tell me that my music did this or that for them. Um, 
So I think those are what keeps me here. Mm -hmm. Just that experience with everything. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. I think it also keeps me grounded. Like even though the music industry is fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I think the music itself didn't say that in the first part of the interview. Right. It makes you think differently now that you're going back and thinking about the. Uh, <laughs> let's start over. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we could definitely set up and we can have, we can do another one of these and, and have a whole, a whole deeper conversation about some, some things for sure. I would love that. I'm always available. I, I, I like to connect with, uh, with friends. Sorry, my mm -hmm. But that's, so that's everything I have written down here. Where, where can people find you on social media? Um, my Instagram is young Leo music. Okay. Um, young is Y U N G. Mm -hmm. Um, they can find me on YouTube. I have some cool videos and a cool one to come okay. on June 11th. Um, they can also catch me at CMW in North by if you're in Toronto in June and we'll make sure we link all these things so people can find you for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm so sorry. My cat is crying. I can't so even hard. hear it. No, I can't, I can't even hear it. No, not what's okay. She's like, the interview is over. Please people. <laughs> yeah. My dog used to do that when, when he knew I was like getting finished my like work day. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. It's like my turn now. Yeah. Well, we'll sign off and, and then soon. yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to do this again. I think. Yes, please. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Well, you, you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll stay in touch. Thank you. You too. Bye now. Bye.